Greetings, Sky Watchers, and welcome to the sky above us. I'm James Albury, and I'm your tour guide to the night sky. On Tuesday morning, November 8th, we have a total lunar eclipse coming your way, and this will be the last total lunar eclipse until 2025. So let's learn all about it. Both Earth and the Moon cast two shadows, a darker inner shadow called the Umbra, and a lighter outer shadow called the Penumbra. For lunar eclipses, the location of the Moon with respect to Earth's shadow will determine the type of eclipse we can see. If the Moon only passes through the penumbra, we will see a penumbral lunar eclipse. During a penumbral lunar eclipse, there is only a slight dimming of the Moon, which is barely noticeable to the casual Moon watcher. When the Moon passes through only a portion of the darker part of the shadow, the umbra, we call it a partial lunar eclipse. When the Moon passes completely into the darker part of Earth's shadow, we have what we call a total lunar eclipse. The reason that I'm encouraging you to watch this eclipse is because of the next four eclipses. Two are partial, and two are penumbral. And unfortunately, those partials are what I call weak partials, because they just barely skim Earth's umbra. So they could be considered penumbral, but since a tiny part of the Moon does enter the umbra, Astronomers can officially call it a partial. Total lunar eclipses are one of my favorite celestial events, because the Moon turns various shades of red during totality, and it can stay that way for up to an hour or more. The red color is caused by sunlight from all the sunrises and sunsets on Earth lighting up the Moon while it's in our shadow. How dark the Moon will get depends on how much pollution and cloud cover there is in Earth's atmosphere. French astronomer André Dangin devised a scale for measuring the darkness of a total lunar eclipse. The scale ranges from L equals 0, which is almost invisible at mid-totality, to L equals 4, which is a bright, copper-red or orange eclipse. The numbers in between range from a blood red to a rusty brown. Eclipses are fairly rare, but there is a pattern that makes them predictable. Like the Earth, the Moon's orbit is tilted in a specific direction. The points of intersection between the Moon's orbit and the plane of the Earth's orbit are called nodes. In this arrangement, the shadow of the Moon completely misses the Earth, and the Earth's shadow completely misses the Moon. Now, let's advance time three months to where the Earth has traveled a quarter of the way around the Sun in its orbit. Notice how the tilt of the Moon's orbit has maintained the same relative orientation with respect to the Sun. When the Moon is new, the Earth passes under the shadow of the Moon. And when the Moon is full, the Moon passes into the shadow of Earth. We call this an alignment of nodes, and this is when you can see eclipses. Let's advance time another three months, and now we're approximately six months after we began. In this position, the shadows again miss their respective targets, and therefore, no eclipses. Let's advance time another three months. Again, the nodes align, and we can see an eclipse. This six-month repetition of eclipses is just one of the patterns ancient civilizations like the Maya noticed. There is another long-term pattern to the eclipses caused by the precession of the Moon's orbit. Precession is the wobble a spinning object performs as a result of physical forces applied to it. For example, as a spinning top slows down, it begins to wobble. The Moon's orbit also precesses. This precession of nodes takes a little over 18 and a half years. Therefore, 18 and a half years after an eclipse, an almost identical eclipse will occur. This cycle was noticed by the Babylonians as well as the Maya. It was later named the Saros by Edmund Halley. 
It was the recognition of these patterns that allowed the Maya to predict both solar and lunar eclipses with astounding accuracy. Many observations recorded over a long period of time allow you to see patterns that might be invisible at first. Ok, here's how the eclipse itself will play out. Keep in mind that all these times I will reference are in Eastern Standard Time, so please review the chart on the screen to choose the appropriate time in your own time zone. First contact with Earth's penumbra will happen at 3.03 am Eastern Time, Tuesday morning, November 8th. The eclipse won't get interesting until 4.10 am when the Moon enters Earth's umbra. Totality begins at 5.17 am and it will last 85 minutes. The Moon will leave the umbra starting at 6.42 am and it will be completely out of the umbra by 7.49 am Eastern Time. If you live on the east coast of North America, the Moon will set before the end of the partial stage of the eclipse. If you live on the west coast of North America, you'll get to see the entire event from beginning to end. Now if you happen to miss this eclipse due to cloud cover or you overslept and you didn't wake up in time to see it, our next total lunar eclipse won't happen until Friday, March 14th, 2025. And yes, that's Pi Day, so if you're a math nerd like me, mark your calendars. Alright my friends. Get outside on Tuesday morning, November 8th and watch the Moon turn red one last time, at least for a while. Before you go, visit our website, theskyaboveus.org. From there you can watch previous episodes, listen to the Sky Above Us podcast, get the Sky Above Us merchandise, and you can even ask me an astronomical question that I'll answer in a future episode. Total lunar eclipses are beautiful to behold, especially when you remember to Keep looking up. You rock, old man! <laughs> <laughs>